There are these really interesting growth simulations created with programs like Houdini that have always really captivated me. I've attempted numerous times to replicate them in Blender. Initially, I used geometry nodes and cloth simulations to simulate the sprouting of a flower. However, while the cloth sim was really dynamic and fun to play around with, it ultimately became really computationally intensive. The cloth sim also didn't offer uh, a, what felt like a really authentic way to grow as a flower would. So, intrigued by this, I looked more into how Houdini operates in their workflow. Interestingly, Houdini uses points to instance other objects that have certain properties and effects on top of them. So using the knowledge that I had gained from Houdini, I went back to Blender and tried a similar process to this. And I realized that the fluid sim inside Blender uses points as well. You add a, add a sphere and just kind of use the quick liquid effect to start your simulation. From here, we're going to just up the resolutions and change a few settings. The important thing to note is to use inflow on the sphere, and that's going to continue flowing the fluid um, out of the sphere. And that creates our growing effect. I err difficulty with flip fluids crashing, especially when it comes to this inflow, so I switch it over to APIC and up the narrow bandwidth, which creates more particles. From here, I turn off gravity, really important. So we have, we start off with a force field. Negative values are always going to attract particles. So the negative value starting off sort of pulls the particles towards it. I put that up a little bit higher and duplicate it in order to start playing around with the idea of this sort of like blooming effect where the Particles go away from the center and then sort of come up around. If you scale the emitter object down or up, um, the size of it actually determines how much water you start with. Flow is also another interesting aspect. It simulates air density and the fluids and kind of react in a way where they follow each other in a line. And again, that helps to Kind of illustrate that growing effect. So here I use the max distance fall off for the repulsive force to create the actual shape that the flower petals are going to take on. Go basically around the, the force itself and then go um, towards the negative force that's on top of it. And even though it's a really strong uh, repulsive positive force, it's still, um, they're still able to go around it and go to the top to kind of create this sort of like cascading pedal effect. I had a turbulence and that also creates some sort of ripples in the actual pedals, which again, it just looks nice. And we see that happening right here. We have everything set up. What we want to do from here is export with all the things that we need selected, and then with export settings, select objects only. Make sure export particles is also ticked on. And then go ahead and hit export Alembic. In a new blend file, delete everything, and then import the uh, ABC file that you just exported. It's important to start a new blend file because the whole thing will still have the data from the uh, fluids and we just have a ton of vertices and it looks great uh, you didn't have to bake anything you didn't have to didn't have to do much it's it's all here ready for you to go so if we make a geonodes window we can go in and start editing the first thing I'm going to do is mesh to points and that works because these again are all vertices so mesh to points just just makes points for us and off the bat we're already seeing the Houdini effect kind of taking fold and what we can do here is pretty much everything that comes with the different types of points so that comes with like points to volume and then from points to volume we have volume to mesh and if you tinker with resolution settings you'll automatically get fluid so you didn't even have to bake 
the uh, the fluid dynamics. From here, there's a lot of different things that we can do. Um, there's a lot of different types of edits that you can have here. So yeah, this looks just like the Houdini sim. Um, we had a lot of fun with it. Of course, you can edit the sim much more and create all sorts of different kinds of looks, maybe taking up that turbulence. Another thing you can do is change this to curves. If you go mesh to curve and then curve to mesh and add in a circle curve for the profile curve, automatically add a ton of detail. And once again, this is all procedurally generated, just like what we had in Houdini. And so it's stacking onto the points that already exist. And so it's pretty performant for your computer. So after I realized how to make the flower and then edit it in Blender, I put it into its own scene where I wanted to imagine it in a swamp with other interesting flowers and grass petals. I threw in a plane behind the, the flower as well to kind of act as if it's like a, a distant mist. There's so much immense potential in exploring the flexibility of fluid simulations in Blender like this. And when you combine with geometry nodes, you can really make a whole host of different things. And I chose this one flower design, but there was a lot of different things that you could have made. By using these two tools together, you can create something as complex as a Houdini simulation. And by not relying so heavily on either the fluid sim or the geometry nodes, you're able to create something so cool and complex at the same time. Mm -hmm.